Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Are You Ready for Your Inspection podcast. I hope you are all well and uh, wherever you are, the weather is good to you. It's very dark in here. There's lots of lights and my special guest has got lots of lights. So we're recording this um, at the very last week of 2023. Um, and this will be released in February. So when you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see that there's a Christmas tree in my special guest's um, image uh, camera. Um, I've told everyone to take the Christmas tree decorations down in our place because I'm a bar humbug. Anyway, um, today I've got a really, really special guest and um, I've been waiting for this one. Uh, probably that you've probably been waiting for whatever happened in a for a very long time so please introduce yourself say who you are and say which setting you are from um and then we can have a conversation about why you're doing a podcast with me yeah um so my name is abby swan um i work at scallywags nursery in Chelmsford, um and i am one of the earliest managers um so we have two managers my job is quality assurance uh, so I kind of deal with all things Ofsted and help the rooms prepare for Ofsted. Okay, so uh, I've known you for a number of years now, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Four years, five years, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Quite a long time, isn't it? Yeah, I think the first, was it the first EPOP, I think, we came to? Or... Oh, okay, so it's got to be five, maybe six years then. Yeah. Maybe, my God, where does that time go? Um, and well, it probably was just after six years because it was obviously six years because you got reinspected. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So around that time, so you can yeah. see exactly. Um, and so you are also a member of our inspection um hub membership, which yeah. we love you being on there. Um, and uh, so I want to talk to you because hopefully when this podcast goes out you would have had your report by now so you can release to everybody what your outcome was um and I, I just I wanted to set the scene really on this because your setting is um there are a number of settings and I put what your setting up there with the the ones that are constantly improving reflecting on what they do making it better you're really honest with me. So if there's something that you think, oh, we could do better at, you always let me know, which I love. I might not like it at the time and I'm going to say that and then you laugh at me and you go, just go into it. And I go, no, take it on board. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we've sort of grown together maybe in a little bit in the last yeah, six definitely. years. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so um, we've been waiting for you to have your inspection. And last week, Last week or was it a week before? Yeah. Oh, the week before, week before, yeah. My God, where does it go? <laughs> um, I had a phone call. That she's laughing <laughs> at five past one with um a snotty nosed Abby. <laughs> with that very emotional. <laughs> very, very emotional. What triggered that emotion? I know why that triggered that emotion because I, I've been there, so I know exactly. But yeah. talk to me about it because it did make me laugh. I was like, oh, here we go. I think it was just the, it was unexpected. And you've been think, waiting for it for six I know, years. I know, but I just thought, oh my goodness, like we're so prepared. And I think I put my heart and soul into my job, and I think our whole team does. And then to think, oh, my goodness, this is it. Like, this is now we've got it. And it's just the overwhelming feeling. Like, I don't think we was nervous or not ready at all. It was just, oh, my goodness, we've got one day and we've got to do all of this and put this in one day. So I think it was just a mixture of excitement. And, you know, we've been waiting for it. And I think it just come out in emotion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so when uh, you rang and I rang you back because I was doing a zoom with somebody so I rang you back and it was like I remember my exact words I remember saying you've got 20 I'll give you 25 minutes I always say you've got 24 hours if you're going to cry snot rant scream whatever you 24 hours but you must come back you know firing on all cylinders but I didn't give you that I'll give you 25 minutes and I remember saying to you right those big girl pants You've got 25 minutes, I'll give you that. But at half past one, you have to <laughs> go 
no, right. Okay. I don't even know if it helps. I just know that I listened. You did make me laugh because you rang me and I thought, they've only just had the call. We know they've just had the call. <laughs> it was almost like Vanessa was on speed dial. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I was so emotional. I thought, I don't want my team to see me like this. I don't want to seem like I'm weak and not ready for it because I was so excited. Yeah. I just I wanted to just have a minute in the office and I just know that you would have given me that boost to actually be like come on we've got this so I just wanted you know at some point we didn't even tell half of the team yet I just wanted to shut the door have time in the office like you know get my feelings together and then I thought and we did exactly that all the management team came in the office we said we've got 25 minutes you know we could cry and stress and then at half one yeah. <laughs> and then half one we said right let's go into the rooms to everyone and we spent an hour in each room and like supported them so it did work <laughs> oh well it did work that's good because uh it's it works for me and so when it when I hope it works for others it's not very often that I give somebody only 25 minutes I'm normally a 24 hour girl but 25 <laughs> minutes was the thing so Talk me through that afternoon then. So, uh, what once we got the call? Yeah, once you got so, the call. Yeah, because so you what, were ready. Am I right? You were ready. Yeah, and we had like the big crib sheet that um you've kind of sent us, and we adapted to our setting. Um, and at the top of the the crib sheet, I remember at the top we put um breathe keep calm cool and collective and as she was talking to me, I just kept reading that over and over, and I think that that helped as well. Yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, after the phone call, we had our moment and then we thought, right, let's go into each room. And we've got five rooms. So we spent an hour in each room, myself and the other manager, and just spoke to them about their focus child, about like the send in their room, um, what their intention was, what their activities might be for that day, um, what events and things like that they had going on. Um, and it just helped to just prepare them. Yeah. And I think we didn't... I know sometimes when I previously had Ofsted, it's kind of like, right, we've got the call, we need to get all the Ofsted resources out and kind of restock the rooms. And I think we've got out of that habit where if something's yes. broken, we replace it there and then. So it was so natural that we didn't have to go in the rooms and replace all the resources. It was just having a quick catch up and then that was it. And it's actually you focus more on the team than yeah. you did on your environment because your environment were you started at the way you mean to go on and that was every day am I right yeah definitely and so the our whole thing of you focus on that afternoon was your staff's well-being and ensuring that they felt prepared yeah yeah and then yeah and then we spoke to some of the parents and we had a sign made up already because she said oh I'll send you through a sign we had it all prepared so we just had to stick the sign up um, and then we had parents waiting at the door saying how they wanted to talk to the inspector. So that was really nice. And some parents who couldn't make it had emailed um, across the messages and things like cool. that. So, yeah. And we didn't stay late. You know, we stayed an extra hour or so just so we could have a little meeting before. Um, and then I just thought I need to go home and have a sleep. To yeah. Be my best self in the morning. Okay, so let's go back to the day of the inspection yeah. then. Okay, um, what time did they arrive? Was it one inspector, About, Gabby? Yeah, one inspector, yeah. Um, she arrived at half eight um, and she spoke to one parent first who was waiting since eight o'clock to talk to her. Um, and then we kind of started the learning walk. Um, so she comes down to the office, started the learning walk, and then she was talking to parents in between um, when they just dropped off. So it was just really natural. It wasn't kind of structured or anything like that. Any top tips on your learning walk? Uh, I was really surprised. Our learning walk took about two and a half hours. I did not expect that. I don't know why. But um, I think that was the make or break in the way. Because That's we... quite a lengthy period of time. But yeah. would that would that be that actually if you you gave out absolutely everything on your learning walk so actually yeah. when you came to the leadership and management bit she didn't really need to ask you because you'd already no. sown that seed with them yeah that- and yeah and she during the learning walk she said oh that activity looks really good I just want to spend some time with that now okay and then we carried on so it wasn't all the learning walk but it was just really natural when she saw, you know, a really good activity. She wanted because that's, to... Sometimes that's what happens. They miss because they spend so long doing the yeah. learning walk. They miss what's going on in the room. So actually, that's a really good way of doing it. Really good yeah. way of doing it. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. and I really liked as well. We, you know, we didn't kind of show off the environment and the room where before, I know when we practiced previously, it was kind of like a show around to parents. But as soon as we walked in the room, we went first to the children and introduced the activity. Yes. Um, I think that works so well. Um, it, and then we could show her the room and little bits that we've added. And actually she could see what was going on in the room anyway. She could see what was what what there was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, then, then what happened? So she did the learning walk and did some observations. Did you do joint observation? Yep, so we did two. Um, so on the phone um, the day before, she said, I want to do two observations, one in preschool and one in the baby room. So they um, told you that? Yeah. So um, she said, these are the ages that I want to see. Um, and she said, I'm going to leave it up to you to kind of arrange a time. Um, so when we had like our little bit in the office before, we said, you know what, we've really been working on safe for sleeping um, and preparing for lunches. So we thought that would be Ooh, so nice transitions. For her, yeah, for her to see in babies because it can be chaotic. Um, but that's something we've really been working on. So after the learning, we, we went straight into... Um, the babies and um nick the other manager she's been really working on communication she's our senko so she did an observation on the babies um like working on their communication and speech and things um and then after that she had her um little break and then she came back and went in preschool for lunch um one thing she really did not like which i was so nervous about was that we have like glass and china real tools authentic resources um during the learning walk she walked in and she said I don't like that um and I said okay well we've got risk assessments in place yes. we have these resources because they have such a big impact on the children yeah. and I was kind of put my foot down and thought do you know what they are so all about adding why well, you're adding that impact am I right yeah yeah and I thought you know you haven't seen it in practice you don't know how good it is when it works um, and then she said, but I want to come back during dinner time and see how the glass cups and things works. And she said, I wasn't, I was not against it. I just didn't agree with it. And she said, but it does really work for your children. And she said, it was just natural part of every day. And I said, you know, we didn't just put these resources out for offset. Yeah. It's embedded into everyday practice. That's the word though, isn't it? Embedded. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I knew you were so ready because everything was so embedded all of the time. It wasn't. You don't bring it out for an Ofsted day, mm. which we know can happen. Yeah. I know it can happen. I'm not daft. Um, and I know it can happen because I probably did it when I was in, you know, as a manager and group manager. I know that. But actually with yours, it's embedded and it's like constantly happening all the time. And that's what I love when I go to settings and when I revisit them and I go back and I think, well, they did that six months ago and they're doing it again now. Like when I was saying to you about um, in Fisherfield, they showed what the children have uh, for lunch as the raw state. And I was like, but they did that back in May. My God, that works all of the time. That's ongoing. That's not yeah. to showcase, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. part of the practice. Part of, part of the practice, yeah. yeah. Okay, then what happened? Um, and then, so we then tidied up lunch. We had, um, so every day when we have focused children, um, them two children are special helpers. So they helped to clear away the table and she loved just observing that. Um, and then she kind of, whilst the, during the transition time, she actually spoke to a few children, just like one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, I think she was testing like their communication and language and, you know, they, she was counting with them and just kind of like playing with them, which was really nice. Really natural. Nice kind of, yeah, I think she was just seeing how, you know, what the children are like, but... Yeah, I know we've had offset inspectors before and sometimes they don't always go to the children. They kind of sit back. So it was really nice um, to see that. Going um, back to the special helpers, yeah. one of the things I say is you don't always have to do activities, do you? No. That's, if I wish I could get that across, is the fact that setting the table, being the special helpers, you know, you know the children doing those risk assessments and all of those things, are an activity in and out in themselves yeah actually it helps them be those human beings valuable people yeah. that we want to it's not about the activities is it yeah and I think as well it really helps behavior and she was saying like um I think she said their behavior is exemplary um because 
I think it's not, you know, children just naturally want to help. And yes. I think sometimes when you're like, no, you go and sit down, it then kind of sparks their unwanted behaviour. So I think you give them a job and that's it. They're on your side. It's so a job, that, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's what we try to do. Um, you know, let them be part of clearing away the table, putting the glasses yeah. on the side. Because um, if you think about it, at home, they don't get to get to do that, do they? Yeah. So actually, it's our job to be able to enable them to do that, to be independent, to be able to be, you know, boosting their self-esteem. And the way we used to say it is, um, it's a job. So as parents, we, those children, parents go out to a job and yeah. children see that. So their job in the setting is a job. Yeah. They We might call it play and we might call it implementation of things that they need to do but it's still a job. And yeah. because we're saying we're giving them a job, they feel it, they're almost like they feel a little bit proud, don't they? Yeah, having more responsibility. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what happened then? And then, um, so we then kind of went onto the carpet while someone cleared and just swept. Um, and then I said, oh, now would be a good chance to do a joint observation because it was story time. And um, so I actually planned in my head to do a joint observation in the mud kitchen. But because the learning walk went on a little bit longer, we thought, OK, let's just scrap that and go with the flow. Um, and then the story time was actually really good. It was a joint story time. So we had two practitioners, one like narrating the story and then one um, being the characters. Oh, so wow. I thought, oh, do you know what? So I said to her, let's do the joint observation now. Um, and I felt less pressured because I chose it, if that makes sense. No. Um, and then, yeah, and that was really good. That uh, takes a lot of courage, if I'm honest, to actually observe a story time. Yeah. Because the story time is really focused, really yeah. focused. But because you embed it and do that all of the time, it's actually OK, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she actually, we have our um, draft report. Oh, um, cool. And she actually said in here, um, children become immersed in the narrative of their favourite stories. They engage in meaningful discussions about the characters and events. They learn new words such as sugar plum, hibernate, and confidently identify new words such as big, huge and ginormous. And that was during the story time. So it, it works so it well. Work. Yeah, it does yeah. work. But again, it was embedded. So yeah. it wasn't just put on, was it? No, no. Because you know for a fact that when you just put something on, ch children never. Yeah, and they think, why Why is this different <laughs> to what we do every day? <laughs> yeah, that is the case. That is the case. Yeah. Okay, so did the joint ops, then what happened? Yeah, and then we kind of just had free play. Um, The next moment after this was kind of like the make or break as well. Um, So the children wanted the real tools out. Um, so we thought, OK, that's fine. You know, it's on the side for them to use. We just said you've got to wear goggles and um, your gloves like you normally do. Um, and then at this time, she pulled the practitioners to the side of the room one to one and was questioning with the scenarios um, and just safeguarding. Um, and then the children kind of got the real tools and was walking over to the table and a little boy tripped and the nails fell out of this box and the nails went all over the floor and you know when all the practitioners just look at each other like oh my goodness <laughs> yeah. but all the children all the children ran over and they said oh it's okay and they all helped each other and then just picked it up didn't even look at the ad adults picked it up and just put it back on the table and she said that's when you know again with embedded how well something works that it's not you know, there's not a big scene or anyone gets upset. They just all help each other, pick it up and they carry on. And she said that was a really good. So she wrote that in the report as well. Good. Um, good. good. Well. Um, and then after that, it was just um, she just kind of spent time in the rooms. Now it was sleep time. Um, so she did a lot a of tricky time the sleep time, isn't it? Yeah. But she did a lot of like one to one questioning. Yeah. Um, so one of the girls, she actually pulled them into the office one to one um, in private and was speaking to them. I think there was a lot of like safeguarding scenarios. Yeah. Um, and was asking a lot about like well-being and as a nursery, like if we've supported their well-being and things like that. Um, but yeah, a lot of the questions were quite similar. So I think okay. she was kind of seeing if we all was on the same page. Yeah, if it was continuous throughout the whole yeah. setting. Yeah, I get yeah. that. Um, and so did you have leadership and management? 
Yeah, it was only, she said it would be about an hour to an hour and a half, but it was actually only about half an hour, 45 minutes. Because you did a really good learning walk. Yeah, yeah. And during, it was so funny during it, she was saying, okay, you know, she asked all our questions about strengths and weaknesses. And then she said, is there anything else you want to tell me about? And I was like, I just want to show you this. I just want to show did you this. Did you whether you um, uh, managed to show your floor books? Did you yeah, show did we you? Did. Yeah, we did that during the learning walk. Um, so every staff member got out their book and was showing her um, and she was really impressed by it. I know some people have had offset and they've kind of said, oh, I don't want to see it. Um, but we kind of just put it in, a, in front yeah. of her. Um, look where we were, were and look where we've been. Yeah. yeah. And it's and a really I, good way because you can, you know, you can talk about it, but there's no proof, is there? Yeah. Whereas actually in your floor books, you've got all of that there. Yeah. And I think especially with, you know, designing our own curriculum, um, because when we had offset before, it wasn't really anything like that. So I think starting the floor books, you can see our journey and the yeah. reasons why we've made our curriculum yeah. um, and how it's personalised to our setting. And she actually said during the learning walk, that was the first thing I explained. Um, and because our curriculum is a lot theory based. Um, using like old theorists and things she said this either works or it really won't work yeah um, and she said I'm not sure how this is going to go and then every um, practitioner she spoke to she questioned them about the theorists and the curriculum and she said it was really risky and ambitious but it works um so I think that, that word ambitious is yeah it? You don't understand it, do you with a with a where but not the, is the word ambitious isn't it yeah mm-hmm. so um top tips then um, so you got a grade tell us what the grade is we got outstanding oh no I'm very excited even my husband was excited if I'm honest <laughs> with you <laughs> the whole team I had to box of the whole team oh, yeah they were it was honestly it was that uh, please message us so that it was it was great we were totally in your thoughts that day I cannot tell you which I love because I always say that um, the settings that we work with we're invested in you you might think that we just go and do something and go away but we don't do that we go no we want to know what you, what's going on yeah. Yeah. yeah um so um top tips then anything top tips on that day that you would say that anybody listening to this would go who have got an inspection that you would I mean, you've mentioned a few words. You've mentioned embedded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I say constantly. Um, anything from you, what do you think? What would it be? I think organisation. I think from the minute we had the call, you know, she was asking lots of questions about children on roll, how many staff we had, qualifications. Unless we had that crib sheet that was really organised, I don't think we would have even got through the phone call. Is it interesting? Just one piece of paper with all these questions on, you've yeah. already got it. And it makes you sound more professional, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I always remember from, I think it must have been one of your podcasts or something you've done before. And, you know, you, you said the worst thing on the phone is to be counting so we just have it in bold, you know, number of children enrolled, number of children were sent. Um, and it's just quick because you're panicking on the phone anyway. So you yeah, just yeah. Want Can you imagine a hundred place nursery and all they're doing is counting? Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. And I know the inspector won't, you know, won't use that, t- you know, use that time as part of your inspection, as part of your grading. But it does make you feel a little bit more organised, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think it. It kind of shows the officer respect to what type of setting they're coming to as well. And um, depending on that. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think the other thing is just have um understand why you're doing what you're doing. Because a lot of the time she was saying, Okay, can you tell me about that? And you know, it was say, for example, we did um, a play-doh activity and she said, Okay, why have you chose this for your children? And the practitioner explained, you know, why we're doing play-doh. And she said, Okay, now really tell me why have you chose this? Um, and then she explained about our curriculum and like the background behind it. So I think it's nothing that, you know, like face value, it's got to be what the reason why you're doing Impact. it. Why are you doing it? It's not just a tick box exercise, is it? Yeah. 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 Um, and I'll say, sorry, I will say the other thing is just slow down as well, because really? I think that's what we did during the learning walk. It wasn't a rush. We just took our time and we I just thought, you know, she's just a normal human being, just like we are. Although offset's really scary, she's also here to find out, you know, are we keeping the children safe? Are they thriving? Um, so we just kind of 
took that, you know, stride and just really was natural and calm um, throughout. So that's the bit though, isn't it? Is the fact that they're not there. And I know people will listen to this and go, you know, especially after, you know, the last few weeks or months, they will go, actually, it's they're they're there to judge you. Okay. The word inspector is scary anyway, isn't it? You're yeah. you're right. Um, being judged is not very nice either. And I do think sometimes there is a we maybe need to really look at the way that we're doing things. But actually, if we didn't if we didn't have a regulatory body to judge us, inspect us, mm -hmm. I do think that we would have an awful lot of settings that probably are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. I'm probably going to get hammered for this podcast episode. I'm sorry, Abby. Um, but I do truly believe that it needs to be something. Do you? Yeah, yeah definitely. And even for us as a setting, you know, if she was questioning staff and they didn't know about safeguarding knowledge that she was questioning, I'd want to know that practitioner is in our setting and they don't know what to do if they had a safeguarding issue. So I think, yeah, they're not there to catch you out. I think they're just there to see, you know, are you keeping children safe? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it's one of those things and there is so much um, uh, in interpretation and, and things on it and, and stuff. And it's scary to, yeah, I can't, I, I can't, say where it's going and I just think that we just if we didn't have something we need something whatever it is we need something whether it's the local authority or whether it's a, another regulatory body or whatever it is we do need something yeah. um, because you are right it keeps you making sure that you know because you think well actually those staff know but actually someone else comes in and questions and they get it wrong you want to know why yeah yeah do they actually know <laughs> do they actually yeah. know yeah yeah okay um so where do you where do you go from here abby because you're still part of um our inspection hub and it makes me laugh all the people that joined our inspection hub are still there even though they've been inspected they're still there they don't want to go which is great for me because i like yeah. seeing them it's almost like this little group now so thinking you are um joining us for epop yeah yeah okay so yeah I managed to persuade you to um do a workshop for us which is stepping outside your comfort zone it is but it's exciting I think um yeah I'm doing a workshop on HUGA yeah. and um I think that's something that also helped us achieve our grade with Ofsted um because it wasn't just about activities like you were saying it was about the environment that we created um, and the behaviour of the children, the behaviour of the staff, and really focusing on their well-being. And I think even myself, like this was my first um, offset as a manager. So I think I needed to make sure my well-being was okay yeah. to then kind of lead that for the nursery as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for EPOP to show I know. Up. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be long, actually, when this... um this gets released it's not going to be long I can tell you it's not going to be long um so um anything else you want to add from your inspection then anything that you feel you feel I'm, I can't congratulate you enough I think you. for you and your team it, it it's an amazing an amazing achievement yeah. it's not all about outstanding but I know I've known you for a while now and I've known where you want to be and what you want to do yeah and this was a big step for you because you were saying it was like the first one is that manager role. Yeah. And that puts an awful lot of pressure, doesn't it, as a manager? Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. think we don't do it for offset. And I think that's the main thing. You know, that's what I say to you. Yeah. Because yeah. you do absolutely everything. Like any training that there's coming out, you do. If it's a safeguarding yeah. training or baby training or whatever it is. Or um, I'm trying to think what are the other things that you do. There's always something that you will go, oh, no, I want to be part of that. Like you yeah. CPD for your tra your staff when you do EPOP. That yeah. that wasn't for Ofsted, was it? No, I and mean, our whole team comes. Yeah, the whole <laughs> team does come. Of us. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's what I mean. And that's why I said to you when you got your grade, don't stop doing that because this yeah. is quite often the case that people get inspected take their foot off the pedal yeah um something happens 
and then they get inspected again and that's when that grade goes down mm -hmm. um but I don't think you guys will take your foot off the pedal will you no. and I oh. think even the day after we had offset so it was halfway through our supervisions the day after offset we just carried on like normal we just thought Do you know what like we're not doing this for offset we're doing it for our staff so yeah. we're just gonna carry on yeah like me doing yeah we've booked training with you already so then I know I know and it's just like it's ongoing it's not and that's what I like because actually yeah. sometimes I just see it as people use us just to get them through the inspections which is great because that's what our job is our audits are do and we do all of that yeah but actually it's still about the embedding of everything isn't it yeah the quality yeah for our children and our staff and our families yeah and I think that's the reason why they come to our setting um because we're we're family run anyway it's kind of just one big family um, and yeah. So. yeah yeah congratulations Abby I, honestly I couldn't be more prouder I honestly for everybody in the in the studio and you know our auditors and even Mr D going how did Abby do and I was just like my god <laughs> I know we're all like rooting for you on that day but I, it couldn't happen to a nicer nicer team it's amazing I think you're yeah and I truly believe that you wouldn't stop so um yeah so thank you very much for joining me on this podcast I thank truly no worries I truly <laughs> truly appreciate it um I would say if anyone's listening to this and they need any help or support if they've got any um questions or they want to want to do an audit with us or whatever then please get in contact because um there are a number of us now we're a team of eight which is great a bit scary um so we may have some availability but email admin at jigsaweyc.com um from me to you abby thank you so so much for joining me thank you